let's talk about some of my favorite gear for 2022. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. I'll leave timestamps down in the description below, so if you're only interested in a particular section of the video, you'll be able to easily jump right to that particular section. But we're going to start with HTs. And I've got two here that have been my go-tos for all of 2022. Well, one of them has been around the whole year, the other one about half the year. The first one is the FT5, and I absolutely love this little HT. And it is my go-to whenever I leave the house. The main reason I prefer this one is because it's got APRS built into it. So typically I want APRS on the HT that I'm carrying. So this is my first choice. Now, a close runner up is the Yezu FT70. I picked this one up used back at field day and absolutely love this little radio. It is missing APRS, but it is super simple to program right from the front of the screen. One of the other things that I've really worked on this year is putting these little BNC connectors on every one of my HTs, and I've tried to make all of my radios uh, BNC compatible. It just makes it super easy when you're switching out coax between radios or you want to change from one antenna to the next. Now, speaking of antennas, my absolutely favorite antenna is this Signal Stuff antenna. Uh, super flexible, uh, and it works really, really well. So definitely my go-to is this. I think I have about six of these now. And I also have their BNC mag mount uh, that's on top of the wife's Jeep. So anytime I'm jumping in and out of that vehicle, it makes it super quick and easy to get the uh, antenna off of the HT and go ahead and drop it on that mag mount on top of the car. I did a video on that earlier in the year, and I'll leave a link to that down in the description below, and I'll leave links to pretty much everything that I discussed today that I can find online. I'll leave links to it down in the description below. Next, let's talk about HF antennas. Still, my absolute favorite is the InFed Halfwave. This will work four different bands, so I get 10, 15, 20, and 40 meters, all with reasonable SWR. And I like these antennas, or I prefer them pretty much over everything else, because it gives me multi-band operation, and I don't need a tuner when I'm using this particular antenna. However, uh, late in the year uh, for 2022, I have started experimenting with some resonant dipoles. And this is a very small little dipole that I built. It's just got a very simple little center connector here with a BNC on this side. And then uh, I think about 16 or so feet of wire for each leg. If I'm limited in the space that I've got to set up an antenna, often I will grab this little simple 20 meter dipole. Next up is HF radios. And I'm really, really split on this decision. But the two that I've primarily used this year are the Yezu 891 and the ICOM 705. And I like these radios for different reasons, uh, and I can't imagine not having something along these lines in my arsenal at all times. I have kind of gone back and forth between these radios throughout the year. So uh, last winter field day, I was using the ICOM 705. Fast forward to the summer, and I was kind of transitioning more to the 891. Uh, I was doing several parts on the air activations while we were out and about in the RV during the summer, and I liked having the 100 watts available to me if I wanted to activate that park with voice. However, as the bands get better and better, almost daily it seems like lately, I have found that 10 watts with the ICOM 705 is almost always more than enough, especially if I'm working digital modes uh, like JS8 Call, FT8, or even Winlink. The 10 watts is plenty coming out of the 705, and it's a great radio. And honestly, as we've gotten later in the year, 
I prefer the 705 primarily because I get all bands and all modes in one simple package. There's some other advantages to the 705 as well. I like the fact that it only has one cable between the radio and the computer, so it's a super simple setup. If you're a little bit more adventurous, you can even go as far as to set up wireless communications between the computer and the 705. So for those reasons, uh, I really, really dig the 705. The other thing that's a huge advantage when you're working with a 705 portable is its low power consumption. The 705 on receive only draws somewhere around 300, maybe 350 milliamps. So super, super low power consumption with the 705. Contrast that with the 891 and you're looking at almost a full amp on receive. And that's a big difference when you're out working portable and relying on battery power to carry you through the day. Speaking of batteries, I've got two that I will pretty much grab one of these every single time I walk out the door. That's the Miati 8 amp hour lithium iron phosphate or the BioNO 3 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. And it really just depends on which type of activation I'm going to be doing, how long I'm going to be out, and which radio I'm going to be running as to which of these batteries that I carry. Now, I have two of each of them. That way I can have one on solar charge while I'm utilizing the other battery. And speaking of the Miati battery, this one is going on two years old now. I think uh, within just a couple of weeks, I will have had this for two years. And these, for the money, are absolutely fantastic batteries. I still refer to them as the Balfanga batteries, so your mileage may vary with them, but I have had great luck with these. The price has went up a little bit on Amazon. I picked these up originally for $30, bucks, and I think they're up to around $40 when you can find them. You can't always find them on Amazon, but if I can find them right now, I will leave a link down in the description below. Now, if you're going to run batteries in the field for an extended period of time, you may find yourself asking about solar panels. This year, my solar panel of choice has been this top solar 60 watt panel. I also have a PowerFilm 30 watt panel but I find myself grabbing this top solar panel more often than I grab the power film. It gives me just a little bit more oomph when I'm charging those batteries and it doesn't weigh that much more. To go along with that solar panel, you're also going to need a solar charge controller. And this one is hands down my favorite and the one I grab every single time I walk out the door. It's the Buddy Pole Power Mini 2. I picked this one up, I believe it was Orlando or Dayton, uh, when I upgraded from the first version of this to the second version. I like this version a little bit better, and if you have a choice, definitely get version 2. It gives you more amperage coming out of the USB port. Other than that, there's very little difference between version 1 and version 2. Uh, but it does give you all of the data that you need when you're working with solar panels and a battery. It will keep up with both how much power you've used out of the battery and how much solar you've generated with your panel. The only complaint I have with this particular device is it's not an MPPT charge controller. I'm hoping they release a Power Mini version 3 soon and include MPPT charge technology. Now, I have no insider information, so that may be complete vaporware. But, hey, here's to hoping. Now, another item that I consider absolutely essential when working portable is a good antenna mast. Just like most of the others, you'll find two on the table. Oh, you can't see the second one? It's the brand new Carbon 6. Well, new to me anyway, but it's the Carbon 6 mast by Soda Beams. My favorite thing about this is its compact size. However, you're limited as to how much weight this thing is going to hold. It will hold that little bitty simple dipole, and it will hold the wire for the in-fed half wave. Anything more than that, and uh, well, this thing just doesn't cut it. And that's where I go back to my tried and true favorite, the TN07 Green Mast. This thing is an absolute tank. As you can see by all of the wear marks on it, I have definitely used this one over the years. I think I've had this one for roughly five, maybe six years now and has been an absolutely fantastic mast. It's got a little bit more girth to it. It definitely won't fit in a backpack, 
But if you need to hold up, say, a small homemade Yagi antenna, well, that Carbon 6 isn't going to cut it. The TN07 mast will definitely hold up a lightweight Yagi. Now, what everybody's probably wanting to know, which computer came out on top this year? Well, you may have guessed it already. It's the Evolve laptop. This has become my de facto standard when I'm headed out to play radio. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. The primary reason is just considering all the factors, the little $60 laptop comes out on top. It's cheaper than a Raspberry Pi and it has lower power consumption. And I like the fact that I've got the keyboard and the screen and the mouse always attached to the laptop. Now, does that mean the Raspberry Pi is going to go away and no longer be used in any of my setups? No, not at all. The Raspberry Pi still has a place because of its form factor and size. It's just not going to be my go-to when I head out portable. So there's a look at my favorite gear for 2022. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.